let's interpret percentiles. So percentiles represent where one would fall within the population as a whole. If we think of this as a normal distribution, we know that this whole normal distribution curve is the entire population, right? This would equal 100%. So wherever you fall, maybe you fall in the 70th percentile, that means 70% is over here and 30% is over here. So let's jump in and talk about this. So number one, Percy is told that among people their age, they are in the 13th percentile for their retirement savings. Explain what this means to Percy. All right, so first off, let's just talk about the 13th percentile. If we draw ourselves a normal distribution curve, we should remember that the average in the, is in the middle, and that's the 50th percentile, right? Because it cuts the normal distribution in two. So if Percy's in the 13th percentile, Percy is way over here, way down in the low part. So what this means is that what percentage of people their age would have less saved? 13% because being in the 13th percentile means 13% of people your age are below you. So 13% have less saved. And we are talking about people um, of their same age. Now, the second part of this question says, so what percentage of people would have more in retirement? Well, remember, as we just talked about, this whole thing is 100%. So if 13% are less, that means all of the stuff on the right would be 100% minus 13, which is 87%. So 87% of the people their age have more in retirement savings. So is Percy in a good position financially? I'm going to go out on a limb and say no, because again, 50% is the average. So 13 percentile is way less than average. And if we're talking about savings, average is about as low as you want to be. Anything less than that is a little rough. So no, Percy is not in a good position financially. Let's go on to number two. According to the 2010 USA Marathon Report, approximately me Approximately 503,000 marathon finishing times were recorded in the USA in 2010. I don't want to brag, but I was one of them. The average finishing time for all runners was 4 hours and 38 minutes, with a standard deviation of 1 hour and 3 minutes. Jenna finished her marathon in 5 hours and 14 minutes. Let's calculate the Z-score. First, let's recall that the z-score is value minus the mean over the standard deviation. All of our times are in hours and minutes. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn everything into minutes. So the average, average is the mean, four hours, if we take four times 60, it'll put it in minutes. So four times 60 plus 38 gives me 278 minutes. The standard deviation, one hour is 60 minutes plus the extra three, so that's 63 minutes. And then Jenna is our value. Five times 60 gives me 300 plus the extra 14, so I'm at 314 minutes. Now I can use that to find my z-score. So value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So if I subtract the numerator first, I get 36 divided by 63, which comes out to be approximately 0.57. So if, again, if we're talking about a normal distribution with Z scores, we know a Z of zero is in the middle. So Jenna is over here, just slightly greater than the mean, right? A slight longer time uh, than the mean. So there's the Z score. In what percentile would Jenna fall? If we use our z-score table, if we look at our z, we know that we have 0.57. On my table, the closest that we have is 0.55. So that means the probability is going to be 0 0.077. If I change that to a percent, I'm at 70.88%, which is roughly 71%. So Jenna would fall in the 71st percentile. What does this mean? Well, 
based off of this, if we say this is where Jenna is on our normal distribution, then roughly 71% of people are over here. So approximately, I'm just going to use that approximately, approximately 71% of marathon runners, and this is in 2010, of runners in 2010 finished quicker than Jenna. Right, Jenna took five hours and, what was it, 14 minutes. So all of these people to the left of Jenna finished in a quicker time, right? Less time than five hours and 14 minutes. Jenna's brother, Jeffrey, also participated. He finished in the 42nd uh, percentile. So which sibling had the better position with respect to the race? All right, so let's go in here. And let's talk percentiles. If we're talking percentiles, we know that the 50th percentile is in the middle. Jenna is at 71%, so she's over here. And Jeffrey is in the 42nd percentile. So this is, we'll just call him Jeff here, is in the 42nd. So who finished better? Well, the farther left you go, the less time it took you to run. And I don't know if any of you have ever run a marathon that is 26.2 miles. Less time is better because you just get done faster. So in this case, Jeffrey um, had the better position because it took him less time. He was quicker than average. So if the average was, do, 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 where is it at? The average was four hours and 38 minutes. Jeffrey finished faster than that uh, because he is to the left of the middle piece. So he finished faster than four hours and 38 minutes, whereas Jenna finished after that. And just for fun, I finished about right here, four hours, 55 minutes. So just a little bit higher than average. And that's interpreting percentiles.